Hello, and welcome to the Reykjavik News Desk. I'm Andy Sophia Fontaine, and these are the weekend's top stories in Iceland. But before I get into that, I want to remind you that I'm having my first Ask Me Anything session this Saturday. This is for $20 patrons, and it will begin on April 1st, no joke, at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. So if you want to take part in that, now would be the time to sign up for the $20 patron level, and you can check out the um, link to the Patreon in the description below. In addition, those at the $15 and $20 level who participated in the poll, deciding on what it is I'm to report on next, the results of that poll will be deciding the first video of April. So again, if you want to get in on that, check out the Patreon link in the description below to see what kind of goodies you can get by subscribing to this channel. And now, the weekend's top stories. Our top story today is that two avalanches struck in Neskopstadr, East Iceland. Nobody was seriously injured or killed, but 10 people sustained minor injuries. This area is prone to avalanches, and most infamously in 1974, an avalanche struck in Neskopstadr, which killed 12 people. This time around, however, there are avalanche barriers across the mountains through much of the region, and evacuations have already begun to get people out of the area, and not just a Neskripstadr either. Residents of Seydisvjotr have also been evacuated from their homes. So I will keep you apprised of any updates if and when they arise. A measure to increase the number of security cameras in downtown Reykjavik was passed through City Hall. This measure was first brought up by the city police in 2017 in the wake of a brutal murder which began in downtown Reykjavik. The mother of the victim, who I'm not going to name here, objected to the police using this murder as a justification for increasing surveillance. But to be fair, this was not the only reason why the police want to increase the number of security cameras in downtown Reykjavik. Now, when this was put to a vote, all parties in Reykjavik City Hall voted in favor of the measure, with the exception of the representative for the Socialist Party, who voted against it, saying that they could not vote in favor of increasing surveillance of private citizens. About a week after the measure's passage, the Pirate Party submitted an amendment to the measure whereby the CCTV system would be reviewed every year instead of every five years. An explosion rocked through Gardabad last week when a building which is under construction caught fire. The fire spread to two gas canisters in the building, which subsequently exploded And mercifully, no one was injured or killed in this blaze or this explosion. Now, the cause of the explosion is still unknown. One possible culprit is the use of tar paper on the roof, which is typically heated after it's laid out. But this is a very common building practice in Iceland, and yet we don't have very many fires of this nature. So it's still a bit of a mystery what caused this blaze, but the matter is still being investigated. Loan, or the golden plover, has returned to Iceland. And just as the red-breasted robin heralds the return of spring in North America, so does the golden plover in Iceland. And that's why the first spotting of this bird in the year always makes the news. The irony of this particular spotting is that the plover was spotted in South Iceland. Currently, there is a yellow warning in effect in South Iceland due to a sudden abundance of snow. Now, a famous poem about the plover begins with the plover has arrived to proclaim farewell to the snow. So, the plover has its work cut out for it here. Lastly, in a sure sign that nature is healing, cocaine use in the capital area has returned to pre-pandemic levels. The levels of cocaine use in the greater Reykjavik area are not measured by self-reporting, but rather through testing sewage runoff water. This is conducted by Andi Sveiching Löve, an assistant professor of pharmacology at the University of Iceland. She added that the levels of other drugs in the sewage water have remained pretty much steady since 2020. Furthermore, cocaine levels in the sewage water may also be an economic indicator. For example, in 2008, there were very high levels of cocaine in sewage runoff water, but then the economy collapsed, and after that, cocaine levels in the water dropped off very sharply. Anyway, those are the weekend's top stories in Iceland. Again, if you like the content that you see here, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you really like the content that you see here, check out the Patreon link in the description below, which reminds me, I want to thank Corinne Vasquez and Marion Ward for being patrons on the $20 level. 
Marion Moores and Laura Johnson for being patrons on the $15 level, and Stephen Ellis and Viva Carvalho Schaffner for being patrons on the $10 level. Again, my first Ask Me Anything session will be Saturday, April 1st at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. So that's for $20 level patrons. And if you want to take part in that session, now would be a very good time to subscribe to my Patreon. And the results of the poll for $15 and $20 level patrons, which determine which single topic video I'm going to do next, will determine the first video of April. So you still have time to get on on that action too. In any event, thank you so, so, so much for all of your support. Be good to each other.